So today's video is the mechanical equivalent of heat. Now, that might not be the best title for this video. I'm going to show you what might be a better title in just a moment. But please don't forget, before we get started, to subscribe to my channel, Step by Step Science. Get all my excellent physics, chemistry, and math videos. Of course, you can give me a thumbs up, leave me a comment, and share this video. Thank you for your support. OK, now, I said this is the mechanical equivalent of heat. It might be a little bit more understandable. It might be a little better if we call this video the mechanical work equivalent of heat or the mechanical energy equivalent of heat because that's what we're really going to be talking about, how we can convert work, mechanical work or mechanical energy into heat. All right, now the person who did the most work on this and gets credit for a lot of this is James Prescott Joule. In fact, the unit for energy, heat, and work are named after him the Joule. And he was working in the 1850s as a brewer. His family had a brewery. He was doing a lot of work with heat and temperature and water, and he got interested in converting mechanical work, and he studied heat and discovered its relationship to mechanical work. What I like to really say is that he discovered how much energy is needed to change the temperature of a certain amount of water, which we now call the specific heat of water. And he used this device, which we're going to go over right now. This device has a mass. The mass is attached to the string. The string goes over the pulley and is attached to this wooden rod right here. That goes into the water in, in this container. And attached to that wooden rod are these paddles. And there's water in the container. And there's a thermometer, which can very carefully measure the temperature changes in that water. Now what happens is this you can let this mass fall. As the mass falls, work is being done on that mass. The work being done on that mass is by the force of gravity. As the mass falls, its energy is changing. It's losing height. It's losing potential energy. The amount of work that is done by gravity is equal to the change in energy. What's well, losing energy? Well, where's all that energy going? Well, as that mass falls, it's pulling on the string. It's unwinding the string. This wooden rod is turning. The paddles are going round and round. There's friction between the paddles and the water. That friction that is between the paddles and the water causes the water to get hotter, get warm up, and you can measure the change in the temperature of the water. So as you do work, the energy decreases. That energy is converted into heat. That's the mechanical energy, the mechanical work equivalent of heat. All right, so when you have a change in energy, you have the change in the heat, the heat is going into the water. The energy is decreasing, the heat of the water is increasing. The change in the heat is responsible for the change in the temperature. Now, as that mass falls down, there's a decrease in the potential energy, we said. There's a decrease in the potential energy because work is being done on the mass. Well, there's a relationship as we said over here, that the change in potential energy is equal to the work, which is equal to the change in heat. All three of those values are going to be equal to each other. That's conservation of energy. We can calculate the potential energy, the change in the potential energy of this mass as mg delta h, which is going to be equal to the change in the heat. We can calculate the change in heat of the water as m, the mass of the water, times c, times delta t, the change in the temperature of the water. Now, what Joule was looking for was this C right here. How much energy does it take to change a certain mass, a certain temperature? So he took this equation, solved for C, and you get that the energy, the change in the energy of that mass, mgh, and then you can divide that by the mass of the water times the change in the temperature, and you will get the amount of energy that is needed to change a certain mass, a certain temperature. And like I said, we call that the specific heat. So here's the equation, and what he found was that if you have one kilogram of water and you want to change its temperature by one degree Celsius, that you have to add 4,186 joules. This object would have to go through a change in energy of 4,186 joules, which would be added to the water, which could change one kilogram of water at one degree Celsius. That is what we now call the specific heat. C is the symbol for specific heat, the specific heat of water. And that is equal to 4,186 joules per kilogram per degree Celsius. 
Now, a lot of times in school, we don't have a kilogram of water. We have grams of water, maybe 100, 200 grams of water. So this is the value we use often in school. C for water, the specific heat of water is 4.186 joules per gram degree Celsius. This value is 1,000 times smaller than this value because this mass, the gram, is 1,000 times smaller than the kilogram. All right, so this is what Joule was researching, and this is what Joule figured out was that the amount of energy needed to change the temperature of one gram of water, one degree Celsius, was 4.186 joules. All right, and that's what he did with this apparatus. Now, we also have the units for energy is, is the calorie. It's another unit, and there's an equivalency between calories and joules. One big C calorie is equal to 4,186 joules. That is the same thing as one kilocalorie. Okay, 1,000 calories is 4,186 joules. Now you see that this is a big C. This is the energy one calorie is the energy needed to raise the temperature of one kilogram of water one degree Celsius. We also have the small C calorie that's the energy needed to change one gram by one degree Celsius. Okay, so it gets a little confusing because you have joules and you have calories and you have big C and small c. But when we use these oftentimes for calories, as you know, is when we talk about food. If you look on a food label, you'll see your food has so many kilocalories. Okay, it's actually kilocalories, not just calories. And we can change those units around to convert from calories to kilocalories and figure out how much energy there is in food and to figure out the mechanical equivalent of heat, which we can do in this example, where you can see you've just come back from a party, a birthday party, and you ate too much food. You ate a big burger, a big piece of pie, and two sodas, and you find out that that's 1,100 calories. That's a lot of calories. And you think, okay, I just fell off my diet. And now I'm going to go and do some exercise. I'm going to run some stairs. I'm going to do some work, some mechanical energy to burn off those calories. And you want to know to what height must you climb? How much energy do you have to give your body? How much potential energy do you have to give your body? How much mechanical work must you do to burn all of those calories? 1,100 calories, burger, pie, and two sodas. So, we're gonna do that right now. Let's say we have 1,100 calories, and let's say your mass is 75 kilograms. It may be more, it may be less, but let's just say for this example, it's 75 kilograms. Now, when we wanna figure out the mechanical equivalent of heat, we have to do this in the metric system. We have to convert to joules. Okay, we can't leave it as calories. We could, but it's easier to convert to joules first. So we have 1,100 calories is equal to 1,100 kilocalories. We're going to convert that to joules, 1,100 kilocalories. One kilocalorie is equal to 4,186 joules, which that turns out to be 4.6 times 10 to the 6 joules. That's 4.6 million joules. All right, that's a lot of energy, okay? So you need to convert all that energy into mechanical work. And you're going to do that using your potential energy equation, because this is the amount of energy you want to burn. This is your mass, this is the acceleration due to gravity, and this is by how much height you have to change your body, because you're doing work on your body. You're carrying your body up. So delta H is equal to PE, this value, divided by MNG, and you get that that is 75 kilograms times 9.81 meters per second squared, and then that is going to be divided into our number of joules. This should be 4.6 times 10 to the 6 joules right here. This value goes right here. Seems to be a little copy and paste error right there. And you get that, that you would have to raise your body up 6,300 meters. Okay, now that's a lot of height. It's a big height difference. Now, lucky for you, your body is not 100% efficient. It's only like 20 or 25% efficient. So 20% of this value is actually just about 1,300 meters. So you would still have to raise your body up, take your body, use your arms, use your legs, and move your body about 1,300 meters up vertically, not like walk 1.3 kilometers. You gotta go 1,300 meters up 
to burn that many calories. All right, that's a lot of calories. And even 1,300 meters, that's a pretty big change in elevation. Okay, now we can also figure out, which is commonly done, is how much water could we boil with that much energy? So let's say we have water at room temperature, 25 degrees Celsius, and we're gonna boil it to 100 degrees Celsius, the same value for our energy. We wanna know how much mass, what mass of water could be boiled with that much energy. Okay, so we have mc delta t, delta q is mc delta t. We're gonna solve this time for the mass. We know delta Q is it, here's the energy. We know now the specific heat is 4,186 and the change in temperature is 75. So here we have once again, our conversion from our kilocalories to the number of joules. We're gonna solve for the mass and we have that the number of joules, 4.6 times 10 to the six joules, divided by C, which is 4,186 times 75 degrees Celsius and that is just about 15 kilograms of water. So when you want to use that many calories, that many joules to boil water, you could boil 15 kilograms. Now it doesn't sound like that much, but if you've ever tried to boil water on a stove, you know it takes a while, so that's quite a bit of energy that you need to boil 15 kilograms or 15 liters of water. Okay, so there you go. That is the mechanical equivalent of heat Really, we can think of it as the mechanical work or the mechanical energy equivalent of heat. And that was figured out by James Prescott Jewell. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you found it helpful. If you did, please do all of the following four things. Subscribe to my channel, Step-by-Step -Step Science. Get all my excellent physics, chemistry, and math videos. You can give me a thumbs up for this video. Uh, you can leave a nice positive comment in the comment section below. And don't forget, sharing is caring. Share this video with all of your friends. Show them just how much you care. Thanks for watching. We'll see